Hello everybody, welcome to the CEI broadcast today. <clears throat> Sorry as I clear my throat. Today is College of Eastern Idaho versus Dallas College Richland in the CLOL League. Um, sorry, let me pause the music. Um, yeah, today will be interesting. I'm joined by a couple of hosts. I think we're um, Howdy, guys. This, these are the other hosts. So this is uh, Disco and Annie. If you guys want to introduce yourselves. I'm Disco. Hey, and this is Annie. Um, and we're actually already into the draft, so I'm going to switch over to that right now. Um... So just to make sure you guys can see this right, we're all good. Yeah, so so this will be the first of three games. Uh, right now it looks like CEI is banning just some champs they don't like to play against. I'm not sure what kind of scouting they've been able to do. Yep. <laughs> Tragic. So we're, really in Seoul. Uh, so we were trying to look at the other team's uh, champion pool to see what uh, they play. There wasn't a lot of history on the accounts that they are on. So it's going to be really hard to know what to ban out for their teams. So, yeah, I agree. It looks like they're just banning things that they don't enjoy playing against and going from there. So I'd actually like CEI here to take their jungle first. Uh, I'd like to see that Vi or maybe the Zac. There's the Vi. All right, now, and now who, who are we playing against, uh, Marmalade? So we are playing against Dallas... Richland College. Dallas Richland College, and they have a mascot. Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's the, the Ducks. Thunder Ducks. That is their, that is their name. The Under Ducks. Thunder Ducks. <laughs> oh, Thunder Ducks. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I introduced myself. Hey, I'm Marmalade. I'm the, I'm Cameron Marmalade. You know, that's me. I'm in charge of the stream today. I always forget <laughs> to introduce myself. I'm so excited to always introduce. The other people that I forget to introduce myself. Yeah. So, uh, right off the bat, we see the Yorks. So Yorks are really good at split pushing. So it looks like they're going to be trying to, you know, force uh, Team CEI to pick between some objectives and matching the York. Uh, the Poppy is a really good counter to the Vi. He can uh, stop the Vi engages. Uh, it's really really strong. Um, and then we automatically see the Samira now. Samir does kind of uh, counter Caitlyn a little bit with uh, the ability to stop her from getting hits in with her Q, but I think with the Caitlyn Lux combination, there's going to be so much coming out that hopefully they can poke down the Samir and really punish her with the fact that she has such a short range. And also, we should probably recap what happened last week. <clears throat> last week... Do you guys remember who CEI played last week? I'm trying to remember. It's sort of the uh, M. Someone oh, out of Monroe Brooklyn. Monroe College, that's what it was. Oh, so last week CEI played against Monroe College and ended up losing 1-2 to two because in the third game it looks like there were just some bad decisions that were made. It sounded like there was some greed that took place. And so I know that uh, Annie and Disco have been working with the league team. So what did you guys do or have you worked on like how to handle greed or... A better way of playing around that, I guess. Well, this well this week in practice, they actually looked really good. Uh, they were uh, they were making better calls. They were pulling back uh, when they should have been. And so hopefully, you know, it's a really easy thing to fix. Uh, you know, not being too aggressive on the map or uh, something they often say is, uh, you know, after you. After you kill the team or uh, gain priority, you can take one objective or you can take one step, but not two. And so I think just doing one thing and then kind of going back to invest those resources will be a big deal for these guys today. Yeah, I will say in our practice scrims, the top and bottom did significantly uh, better. Um, top was very aggressive, was able to push objectives and backed off when necessary. And then their bot lane was going to even or winning lane a lot more consistent. So hopefully they can translate those into these more competitive games. So we do get the Aatrox. Aatrox is a, real, a really strong pick for team fight and split. So hopefully the Aatrox can handle themselves against the York. And then we have the Vigar and the Nami. So I'm not really sure what the goals are for 
team uh dcr yeah dcr um it's really hard to so it looks like uh dcr is going for a lot of uh they're really going for a good split push strategy and then uh the other four will play relatively safe they've got a lot of good disengage with the uh with the vigar uh circle stun uh whatever that's called and then the nami wave uh they can really um push back and and clear the wave really well with those champions yeah they're and so they're looking they've... to prioritize this york I do agree that they do have a lot of uh, ways to disengage, like with the Poppy uh, shield, and then also with the Samir being able to block things as well. You know, they have the Cage and the Nami ult to really, you know, pull back from fights or to punish people. So hopefully it pans out for them in their York. I, I think the Aatrox is going to be really strong here. Um, the one thing that they're not going to be able to disengage from is that Anivia wall. So if that Anivia wall comes in, it doesn't matter if they have those abilities, they're going to be trapped and they're going to get collapsed on. Yeah, that was kind of an interesting thing for me to see, I guess, because I've never seen um, Jedi play Anivia. I don't know if he's been practicing Anivia on the side. Jedi's played Anivia quite a bit. He used to, uh, he's very good on the champ. Ooh, yeah. Spicy pick. Yeah, yeah. I'm real. I'm actually really happy that they picked the Anivia. I think it's gonna be a little hard to land the Qs, uh, depending on how well uh, the Samira uses her abilities. But I think the Anivia wall is gonna keep the other team from being able to disengage, which is what they're gonna be wanting to do. Or when they do, um, when CI does get into a bind, they're able to use that wall to disengage themselves. So I think that's a super strong pick. So I guess from my perspective, it looks like uh, DCR is looking for the more scale composition with somebody like Yorick and Vigar who kind of just scale really hard over time compared to like CI who kind of has a more what I feel like mid mid game champions. So if I'm wrong, you can correct me, but I feel like uh, CI is trying to look like they're trying to end it a little bit faster than DCR would be. Well, we're really, really, it's a matter of you know how the comps are meant to play out. So, um, the the Thunder Ducks have got a really good front line there. They've got good engage. They've got good crowd control. Poppy's great uh, at those ganks. Actually, ganks a little similar to how Vi does. Um, but the but the Falcons have got a much better dive, and they've got much better siege. You know that Anivia um, can even push a wave into some of these champs who are trying to disengage. Um, and they've got really, they've just got better wave control in general. But they also are a little short on a gauge. Uh, gauge. Other than the, the Vi or an Aatrox coming in off the flank, they don't have much in the way to start fights. Yeah, I will say to your point of uh, the Nivea being able to push the wave in. So they do have a lot of wave clear, and they, and like you said, they will be able to force fights by pushing in under people's tower they have such a long range with the lux and the caitlin that when they go to when the other team goes to defend the tower you know they're going to get punished um so it's going to come down to you know is that york split pushing efficiently is that york ahead and how much threat is he pulling to the other side of the map so I guess as a question, because we're talking about Yorick being able to split push, but uh, if Aatrox is able to deny that, how is the matchup between Yorick and Aatrox? Is it a very 50-50 kind of matchup, or does one player have it further than the other? All right, so as we load in here, Annie, so what do you think? Um, you know, if this game goes, the later this game goes, which side's going to be more favored? I mean, obviously, you, all, you know, Vigar is infinite scaling, but I think um, Lux can really punish the Samir, the Nami, the Vigar. Um, I'm I'm really choosing CEI for the early, mid, and late game here, unless unless the other team gets ahead somehow. Um, I do I, think they've got a better team fight. They've got a yeah a direct target lockdown. And the damage from range to finish them off. All right, so CEI coming out, getting some early vision in that river uh, to protect against an invade here. Other than that, 
not a lot going to happen here for the first couple of moments. They're being pretty defensive. Both teams are. And it does look like we're going to get a, a blue start for a red start for the poppy. And so she'll rotate up, probably gank top, look to gank top first. And let's see where Vi ends up going. And she's going to match. So both teams realizing that this top is going to be uh, an important bit of focus and playing there early. For those that aren't used to um, all the champions, the reason York is so powerful is because his ultimate Someone's a maiden, and the maiden can attack towers and champions and things with him. So when he's attacking towers, he can really take them down really fast. He also can summon these little ghouls, and he can have four ghouls in each lane, and those will push waves on their own until they die. All right, there's some early trading in the bot game, just some harass. Uh, what you want to do is you just want to try to get this uh, these little bits of damage off. And get them to use their uh, their potions and their resources so that their health gets down low enough that you can do something uh, significant. So here on top you see uh, the Aatrox got a little bit of an advantage. And so he's got a, a level on the York. And so he's harassing him a little bit there. Trying to push him off that wave. Keep him away from the, the CES. Yeah, Aatrox has an extremely strong level 1 where he is... Almost three abilities caked into his, his 1Q. So, <clears throat> this York was respecting it, backed off a good bit, not wanting to trade back. He uh, misses E right there, and the York's going to be on our tower for a good bit until he's able to summon his little minions. Here's a gank coming on mid. And Navy did land the stun. It really set up the uh, the Q from Artanis, and they were able to get first blood. Oh, that was just a great move. Uh Vi was able to to get off the Vault Breaker just in time to prevent the... Or Artanis was able to get off that Vault Breaker just in time to get through the stun. Normally that would have stopped him, but it takes just a second for that uh, circle that Vigar puts down to to activate. Uh, really, really well done there. Nice aggressive level 3 gank. Now it looks like York trying to get this way froze. Uh, Aatrox is, has killed all the minions though, so that's not going to happen. But he is a little bit exposed. It uh, looks like Poppy is probably going to be coming around looking for a gank, but uh, Artanis is already there. Vigar did TP back in the lane, so that's down, and it's going to allow Jedi to push his wave in and get a nice clean back. It looks like they're collapsing in the jungle on the top. Yeah, so this Poppy, they, they got Pryo. Uh, Aatrox has priority, which means he's got his wave pushed in, and so does Anivia, especially with that kill that got pressure. And so they saw the Poppy there, and so they collapse in and push those resources off of, uh, push Poppy away from that. You'll notice Poppy is only level three, and Artanis is level four, and he's got a kill. So once he goes back to spin that, he'll have a significant advantage. This is really bad for the Poppy, who depends a lot on being um, tanky and having a lot of movement in order to get her engages off. So this is looking really strong here for CEI early. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And they haven't had to use their pots yet, so they're able to stay in lane. Oh, on the top lane? Almost takes out Sir Moon Knight, Miss Engineer did. Uh, got a lot of priority on that leg. York's going to uh, have to back now, and that wave should crash into the turret. York does have teleport, so he'll probably be bringing that in pretty quick. And we did get York's flash there. So York's going to be really primed for ganking, and Aatrox is really easy to gank for. All right, Poppy's picking up that Scuttle Crab around Dragon. That should give them some extra vision in that area. They've got a nice vision ward down there, so they're going to know if CEI tries to do anything. Artanis is coming down. 
probably going to clear out some of those vision. Some of that vision will take out the vision ward, probably. It looks instead like, like Poppy's. Just yeah, yeah. Yeah, Poppy got a great engage off on that Caitlyn. The Caitlyn was not able to vault backwards. Uh, the Poppy stopped the vault and it forced the Caitlyn to flash to get out of that situation. We have we have Artanis over here clearing up Dragon Pit. He's just clearing ward. He's not starting the dragon yet. And then he's rotating over mid. He's gonna probably catch a lot of that wave, so that way we're not losing uh, CS under tower. So despite the early death, Viger is uh, is CSing quite well. Uh, it's got a bit of a lead over Jedi. Yeah, another thing is that Jedi did not take TP, so he's got the Ignite. So um, the Viger is going to be able to get back to lane a little bit faster and help uh, and keep that CS up. All right, looks Which like they've got priority mid and bot, and so they're going to move on this dragon now. I don't think that the Ducks can do much about it. They're going to rotate, so they might be looking for a fight here. Uh, the Viger gets caught early. That's going to keep him out of the fight. Jedi may get a kill there. Nope, just drove him off. Going back to the team now. Uh, Nami's going in with the with the bubble there. Shake Keeper picks up a kill. Lux has also picked... Uh, Juju has also got a kill there. And I think we won that fight. I didn't get a great look at it. Miss Engineer, like Engineer. Fresh on a Yoick. There we go. So after that, now CEI is out to a significant lead here. We've got 1,500 gold lead, kills on several carries and champions across the board, and we've got Dragon picked up. This is a very good early game for CEI. They wanted to have Viger come in on that flank, uh, but they had the vision there, and so Jedi was able to kind of pick him out and kick him out of the fight early, and that left a, a 3v3 on the other side, which did result uh, in Caitlyn and Vi going down, uh, but, they got, but they got kills in return and picked up the objective. So Poppy went ahead and... Uh and grab tier two boots trying to get around the jungle a little bit faster whereas uh Fi, uh doesn't need as much mobility uh just went in and got the damage items so she's looking to really get in here get a lot of big bursts out and hopefully snowball her lanes yeah poppy is not even six yet which is a a pretty big deal uh, if poppy had been six in that last fight she could have cleared um some of the cei players from the dragon pit with her glory hammer I'm just making up names. I don't know what they are. So this little like Poppy and New York are trying to go for the Rift Herald over here. We see our Artanis on Vi coming up. And we see both the mid laner and top laner come down. They're collapsing on this Rift Herald. Let's see what happens with this uh, Poppy in New York. He knocks the Aatrox away. The Poppy does. I Artanis. don't think they're going to have the damage to finish this Rift Herald in time, though. Aatrox is back. But it's going in for an engage on the Poppy. And Poppy should be dead here. But Vi also died. Jedi did pick up the kill on the Poppy. York picked up the kill on the Vi. No, I guess that was Viger. All right, so this gold lead is extending here. For the Falcons. I don't think it... Oh, okay. Aatrox did pick up that Herald there. So if he does get another kill on Moon Knight, they're going to be able to do a lot of damage to that top tower.
we're already starting to see some of the struggles uh, with the Aatrox versus York matchup. Uh, here comes Artanis. He's uh, ganking the York, and we got the Flash. He's Five dash should come off cooldown. Should be able to lock this up really easily. Yeah, that was really clean. So as we saw, the York is still behind. He was still able to put a lot of tr pressure on the Aatrox. So <clears throat> I'm looking forward to seeing how that matchup plays out as the game goes on. All right, so they're going to clear these win minions. Probably drop Herald here. It's important to get Herald down before the 14 minute mark when those plates disappear. Herald does a Almost two plates of damage, or about one and a half now. They've changed that in the recent days. So they picked up three plates there. Four plates. Which is a lot of uh, resources and gold. Turret Ninja, once again, goes in. Get gets the kill, kill this time. And does not die to the turret. So some big improvements over last week. That was a really good solo kill. It's really hard to get a solo kill in uh, mid lane for uh, like mage versus mage matchups. So now in the games that the Falcons have won, uh, this formula, you know, where uh, where Jedi gets fed and our our Tannis is out there making plays, uh, does seem to be playing out once again in this game. That's a very good sign. Good uh, sign for the way CEI likes to play. We got second dragon coming up here. This one's going to be a mountain drake. Yeah, it looks like Team DCR is trying to get some vision there. Uh, they might collapse down here on the bot lane. It is 3v2 right there, but Artanis is behind them. It wouldn't be really hard for Artanis to float. Neither top laner has a teleport, so this will be... Uh, it'll only be a 4v4. It looks like the ducks are choosing to give this one up. They're hovering, but they don't look like they're in a position to engage. Yeah, the Vigar's still staying mid. He hasn't floated over yet. A Poppy's trying to disengage. Got two. No, just got one. Sorry. There's that ice wall that I was talking about. The Poppy, you know, put up her uh, ability where she can't be penetrated from any outside uh, projectiles, but the ice wall just prevents her from being able to move. So... So if the Ducks were going to engage, when Poppy uh, zoned away Caitlyn and Lux, that would have been the time to do it. So I'm not sure what else they hope to get accomplished at this point. Yeah, after that Lux ult right there on the Samira, I don't see them being able to go in. They're just way too low. This Aatrox is doing a uh, fantastic job pushing in this uh, York. So we're actually looking. They started those dragons really early. We're looking at about a 23, 24 minute dragon. A uh, dragon soul, if they continue this pace, which is pretty early to uh, to lock that down. Nice. Are we able to see the soul? What's soul? Oh, nice. It's the uh, hex hex tech. And if you are behind, you do not want the other team getting the hex tech. It allows them uh, a lot a lot better engage. Their attacks will slow you. And Jedi is just doing so much damage. That uh, is a great wall. Goes in. Oh, he sorry. should have this skill here. I, I, it's the Kim Tech. I'm sorry, not the Hex Tech. Oh, Kim Tech. See? Also good. I don't, I don't think the Kim Tech's all that great. As far as the yeah. dragons go, I'd prefer yeah, any other okay. dragon. But I, Dragon Soul is still like very the, strong. I do like the passive bonus on, not necessarily the soul, but the passive bonus I like. And Shakekeeper and Juju showing some good synergy there. Oh, here we go. Vi coming in for the dive. Hits the Vault Breaker, and that Vigar is toast. Once again, a nice dive by Artanis, who will get out of there. Yeah. I, I, for the Vigar, I think he needs to put the cage right on top of his body. That way, when the Artanis goes in, he for sure gets caged. Whereas if you put it around yourself, it doesn't always hit the cage. All right, Atrax and Vi here trying to take on this Yorick. Got some knockups, got some CC. Poppy's here to try to knock somebody away. It does not just save the Yorick. Yep, just too late. It looks and like they're going for the Rift. Yep. 
So, I really like CIs right here. They're really pressing in. They're getting good vision. They're, you know, pressing the jungle, pressing the top, mid lane. They're really not letting up on this team. They are getting the advantage, and they're keeping it. Yeah, a, a 5k plus lead now going into just 15, 16 minutes. Uh, this is a very, very strong early game. CEI will have to do something catastrophic at this point uh, for the game to turn. I haven't seen really any signs of life out of the ducks. Only nice. some... Yeah, only some rumbling. No actual thunder yet from the Mighty Ducks. Oh, we got the double uh, cage there from the Vigar. But it's just not going to be enough damage. She's just a little bit too far behind to uh, to get any kind of real pressure out. He did can, put them can down. We, can we see how many stacks the Vigar has? Yes. 118 100, stacks. Yeah, that's actually... I would say probably about half what you would want to have. Now, what that means is, uh, as um, as Vigar uses abilities to to kill his minions or to hit champions, he gets these little stacks. You can see down there, and those stacks give him uh, ability power, which increases the damage of all of his abilities. And so he's just not quite where you'd want him to be at this point. He's not doing the damage, and it's built into his kit. And so if he does not kind of catch up on that scale, he's going to be behind the whole game. So what I'm reading here is a lot of people aim for 10 stacks. No, that's not right. Sorry. 120 stacks by 20 minutes or 80 stacks by 10 minutes is really, really good. So, Figure doesn't uh, stack up as fast as Nasus does. <clears throat> he does get stacks based on hitting his abilities onto enemy players and last hitting minions with his Q. They did catch the uh, Nami right here. The Nami's got a lot of damage coming out of there. They're getting yeah. all... They're yeah, taking CEI mid. dropping that Herald. They may even get a charge off. Oh, looks like Poppy's going to stop that last charge. Uh, but an inhibitor is... A, it means the mi middle wave's going to start spawning these extra strong minions. You can see it there on the mini-map. A big red dot. And they are just cleaning up uh, the, the ducks the left and right. I don't see... DCR coming back from this. It looks like uh, they're going to walk over there, get this uh, extra dragon over here. Top lane is really pushing in. He's not really scared of this York at all. He's really uh, taking that matchup really well. They're going to get this dragon for free. There's no one on the other team that can even contest it. And we can see the gold toggled there. Uh, you can see the significant advantages um, that the CEI players have in the different lanes. Uh, 2,000 in mid, another 2,000 in top. 1500 in the jungle um i know 2500 in the jungle uh just a dominant performance by cei right now and just look at the vision we have a lot of vision in that buy side jungle um that vision is going to really help us be able to pinpoint where the other team is where we need to rotate on the map and how can we just get that little bit of an edge and get to certain places faster? Now, on top lane right now, we're, uh, it looks like Miss Engineer is struggling on the Aatrox. He's got, uh, got ganked. He uh, stayed a little bit too long without vision. And we need to go over here and make sure we're warding up for this Baron. It's coming down. Now, now this has been also been a common problem for CEI. Uh, they've got, a, like, uh, like Annie said, they've got great vision in that bottom jungle. And they're pushing, but they didn't kind of push together as a team. So uh, if these three bot had been pushing, if uh, if Miss Engineer had been a little bit more patient and kind of waited for this pressure to show up on the bo bottom of the map, they wouldn't have been able to allocate three people to go up there uh, and take him out. And so that's just something they need to be aware of. Yeah, this Vi is just manhandling the York. There's nothing the York could do right there. Um... They spent everything on, on Aatrox when they fought him. Yeah, and Nivea with another pretty good wall. As that wall levels up, it'll get bigger and bigger. Loves those turret shots. 
and baits the poppy into a kill. Nice. The Lux came around the corner, easily landed uh, the CC that she needed to secure the kill there. They have a lot of priority right now. They have supers pushing in mid. Uh, Artanis on the Vise coming down. I think they're going to get really good vision here and try to set up for this Baron or maybe a pick. Yeah, right now I'd like to see them back and just move to Baron. They've got supers pushing middle. They've got the they've got Pryo in all the lanes. Uh, they've got a significant fighting advantage. If they come to contest it, they should take Baron and they should finish this within the next few minutes. Yeah, it looks like Anivia is backing and they're going to try to spend their gold, try to go get some vision in top lane, and I think Baron is going to be the next move. So there's... <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. There was actually a question that came up in the chat. It was... Um, the question was, these players still farm while they have like half health. Is that better than going back to spawn and getting uh, half health? So if you guys want to explain like uh, why you would want to stay and farm if you have like half health and kind of... Yeah. So can, can you show us the gold again? Yeah, of course. Uh, for the players? All right, so you can see the the print, golden parentheses is the gold total gold they've made so far in the game, and the gold in front of that is their current resources. So let's take like um, Jedi, uh, who's on Anivia here. He's only he just went back to base. He's got a hundred gold in his pocket right now, and so even at half health, he's probably going to try to look for different ways to farm uh, and kind of get some resources so that when he goes back, he's going to have um, something he can acquire there. And so a lot of that is really just depends on the game state. So for for the for CEI right now, it's probably okay to stay out at half because they have different ways to regen the health. Uh, for the ducks, they've got Nami who can help kind of help regen as things go along. Uh, some of these items give life steal. And also, so it's not an easy question to answer. Yeah. Yeah. So also another thing to look at is does the other team have players that are dead? Uh, do we have vision around you? Do you have a lot of vision to where if you know if someone's coming, you can just easily back off? If other players on the other team are dead or they're accounted for on the map, as in you could see them on the other uh, parts of the map, then it's okay for you to take some a little bit more CS or to go to the jungle camp before you back. It's okay for you to push up, even if you're half health. Now, um, another thing is the team on DCR... Uh, they don't really have a lot of strain, uh, strong, super engaging champs. So even if you didn't have vision and someone kind of like walked up in lane, we can just walk away from them. Um, All right, looks like they're going to move on this York here. This is a great start. If they kill this York, <laughs> they are going to they're going to lose a lot of turrets because uh, they've got Baron, they've got pushing power, and the York is dead. So they're going to go probably secure this uh, Dragon Soul, and York and Vi are going to push and probably take the two towers and the inhibitor. And depending on how things go with the Dragon Oh, this will probably be close to end the game here. Yeah, so we got the our jungler and our top pushing the top lane. They're going to get that for free, and they're just going to continue to push. We have our uh, bot in mid lane. Uh, pushing out the waves to make sure we have good vision. We have uh, good vision set up in that bot area, so they're going to be able to get the dragon there for free. We know exactly where all the other team are, and <clears throat> we're going to be able to take not only the dragon, but it looks like two towers in the top lane as well. All right, so there's a fight at this for this top inhibitor here, and it looks like they overstayed their welcome here, which is one of the things we were talking about. We've been trying to work with the team. They've got, uh, you know, half the team taking the dragon soul. Uh, that Aatrox and that Vi just need to back off a little bit and wait for that pressure to come back. You don't need to make things happen all at once there. Right. They did get the tower, so it's not a complete loss. But yeah, I would like to see the Aatrox live because you, you'll be able to create more pressure while you're alive than you are dead. Now this Vi is huge. She's going right in on this Nami. doesn't even care. It's going to be able to go right back under the Smear. There's the Poppy's Artanis trying to kill for this Smear. making things happen. Good just destroying the other team now, 1v4 now now our bot lane to mid or, or pushing the mid lane they're gonna get the inhib right here it looks like Artanis is trying to get out Aatrox uh, is right back in there he TP'd, yeah he, he TP'd in uh, Artanis did an amazing job there picking up those two kills and keeping the other members distracted so they could not come uh, to save their base this will probably be the last team fight here So they're going to rotate over there and grab the uh, in-hip and top lane. 
And they're trying to push these uh, waves up. They do have the Baron buff, so these minions are a lot stronger. They're going to just write down these towers. The Nami ult comes out. There's really not a lot of follow-up for it. Uh, they're just going to push right in. Here comes the Anivia wall, and they're all clumped up together. Can't really see what's going on. And then <laughs> the Aatrox comes in and cleans it all up. Yep, that'll that'll be it for the game. So game one goes to CEI. Nice job. Uh, really just a dominant performance. Uh, the Ducks at no point had any kind of uh, anything going for them, really. Yeah. I very did. impressive. Very solid start. All right, so they're already doing the pick and bands. Uh, they're getting rid of the Aurelian Soul, the Shaco, same bands as last game. And then right off the bat, we, we got the we got the Vi band, of course. And then they're bending out a little bit of mid lane, so we got the Victor band and the Nivias. They don't want anything to do with the mid lane, and they get the Vi out of the way. Now, Artanis has a lot of other junglers he can play. He's really good at Sejuani, Zach. Um, He's got a lot of arsenal, and then so does our mid laner, uh, Jedi. You know, he's very comfortable on both of the Wind Brothers. He can play the Aurelia. He can bring out um, a Bex. He, he just has such a, a variety of champions that he can pull out. You know, Banning him, I, I understand why they're doing it, but I don't think it's going to pan out the way they want it to. And so this is a little bit of a, you know, Sejuani is... Uh, is a little bit more controlled uh, than the Vi and, you know, the Zakar. And so, and the Warwick's going to be able to match the Sejuani quite well early, um, but doesn't really play well, you know, as the game goes on. So yeah. I, I don't really love that Warwick pick there. But compared to last game, I do think the Warwick pick is a little bit better than the Poppy pick as far as them wanting to get um, and engage them wanting to get so, uh, into a into a fight, get oh. some CC going. Uh, the Morgana is instantly I, gonna counter the great work. Pick. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge counter to work. Uh, the Black Shield can come out, uh, stop the fear, stop the ult. Uh, can counter Mordecai's ult. Very very strong pick. Uh, and Easy plays a very very good Morgana. So the only thing that uh, that we've seen with this Morgana is end lane not being quite as aggressive as you'd like to see from Morgana, looking for bindings, looking for some of that harass. Uh, she tends to play a little back, so it'll be interesting to see how that uh, how that plays out. So far, it looks like Team DCR is trying to play a little bit more aggressive champions. They got the work and the Akali, very, very aggressive champions. Mordecai is not aggressive, but um, he is a lot more team-oriented than Yorick is. So it looks like they're going to be going more for the team fights this game uh, instead of the split push. So what's your prediction mid for this Akali? Uh, what is what is Jedi going to pick to counter this Akali? Uh, no. He plays so much, it's really hard to tell. Um, I, 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 I have a hunch he might come out with the Aurelia. It'll be the Aurelia. Could be the Silas. Could, uh, we've even seen the Silas. Pantheon recently, uh, which does well against some of these higher mobility champions. Yeah. The only downside about <clears throat> Pantheon, I think, is he falls off a little late. And when they already have the Sejuani, I, you know, the Sejuani basically just becomes like a cc bot and tanking the you know all the damage interrupting things he doesn't really have enough damage late game on its own so i'd like to see something else besides a pantheon to help that so out. there have been quite a few bands here against shade keeper uh so we've got the draven we've got the uh caitlin band out we've got the jinx counterpick oh here comes the twitch Awesome. This is exactly what I want to see from him. Uh, I know he's been practicing the Twitch and the Varus, and I think the Twitch is going to be a really good pick right here um, if he uh, can stay alive, which with the Morgana being able to black shield a lot of the CC coming in from the other team, I think it's a really good pick. Uh, that is going to be a lot of damage to be able to follow up the Sejuani, and let's just see what the ventilator picks. So Twitch, uh, what Twitch does is Twitch goes, you know, does a lot of damage like all of the other AD carries, but he can go invisible and then kind of show up and he hits his ultimate and he gets an extra long range and his uh, his arrows, crossbow bolts go through everybody. Um, so he can do a lot of damage if he positions correctly. Now the, the downside is that this Twitch gets caught out by uh, the Akali, can kill the Twitch quite easily, uh, and so can the Warwick. So 
Now, Jedi went with the Yone, which is a very aggressive pick, uh, very strong. This is going to be very much a skill matchup uh, in that mid lane. Yeah, I think I think the Yon is a, a really solid pick. It offers a lot of damage, a lot of CC, and like you said, it's going to be a skill matchup. If he gets behind, it's going to be a really big struggle. If he gets ahead, he calls in for a bad time. But this is going to be a spicy mid lane. I'm very excited to see how this plays out. Yeah, they're both melee champions. They're both going to be I have to you know see us right next to the wave. It's going to be really, really aggressive. The ganks from the jungles are going to be really crucial right here. It can really punish the other team. So Warwick is stronger than Sejuani early, uh, but his Warwick's gank potential doesn't really come on strong until he hits level six. And Sejuani's got a bit more CC early, so we'll see how that plays out. I would expect them to match again. I really would like to see CEI and the Ducks. I'd like to see both of those guys invade and try to get some vision. At least eyes on the jungle. Yeah, was, I think the Senna pick is a uh, really interesting. Um, they are going to have a good amount of frontline from the work and Mordekaiser and a lot of die from the Akali and work. So having the center in the back line is uh, not going to be too bad. I just hope that you know they're going to be able to get a lot of the poke and a lot of the attrition that Senna can bring. Um, I would know, like to see this uh, go to a late game. Yeah, we we we've talked about you know the different lanes, but as a team. Um, I really like CEI's team comp compared to what the Ducks have come up with there. Um, the Ducks will look to uh, probably look to to skirmish quite a bit. They have quite a few skirmishers, uh, and what I mean by that is, uh, if we take just two or three players, a lot of these fights uh, looks like they'll have the advantage. But when you put the whole team together, um, CEI has got a much better team fight. Yeah, honestly, I think the Morgana really seals up the comp. I think having the Black Shield to stop you know, the Senna Snare, the Jinx Snare, uh, any ECC from the war coming the out. The Warwick Ult, think, yeah. Yeah, it's just so, so, so strong if he can land the Black Shields when necessary. W um, will the I, Shield I, stop the Mordekaiser Ult? Yes. Let me yeah, look so it up. Let's see check. how he uses that. I did actually have a question, just a personal one. So I know that <clears throat> ADCs like Varus and Twitch <clears throat> uh, can go multiple builds. They can go either an AD or an AP build. So I guess, mm -hmm. what is or what do you look for when building AP or AD against a team? <clears throat> yeah, you're looking for what? What I is think your the AP Twitch team? just got nerfed? Yeah. It did. It's still not bad, though. I think you got to look at like how, what damage is your team bringing to the table. What damage is the other team gonna be able to to build against? So like Mord can get kind of tanky. War can get kind of tanky. Akali can get somewhat tanky. The other two not so much. Um, you already have a lot of AD come from the Aatrox and Yon. I I can see it going either way. I can see AP or AD going here. Um. I I don't think it's I don't Just think either one's wrong. Mid. All right, we got the double project skins coming from uh, Team DCR. Uh, you know the synergy of their skins is really going to help uh, boost their you know damage and everything. This uh, game, uh, Team CEI really needs to coordinate a little bit better on that end. All right, so I am looking to see this Akali punished early. Uh, CEI loves to play through their mid lane. Let's see where the path that goes. Oh, Looks sorry, like, I, was, uh, I was having mic issues.
All right, again, uh, the teams aren't really going to know where the other junglers are starting. Here's Warwick getting a little aggressive, maybe looking to get some vision on where Artanis is going to be moving. He did get spotted out here by Jedi, so they know Warwick's going to be top now. So, uh, Mordekaiser can struggle a little bit against Aatrox. I'm really surprised they let the Aatrox through uh, with them locking in the Mord before the Aatrox. So, um, either this Mord is super confident, or they just weren't thinking that far ahead. You know, a lot of times at, at this level, um, people are going for comfort picks. You know, we don't know, we don't have a lot of stats on, on Moon Knight. His champion pool may be small. And so he was he was just thinking comfort rather than uh, counter pick. Yep, so far it looks like the Mordekaiser is playing a little aggressive up there and um, and bot lane uh, is also playing aggressive. It that was a like great finding by Easy for some uh, for a good trade there. <clears throat> I do like it so far from uh, the other team here from uh, sorry wait. DCR. They are playing a lot more aggressive in their lanes. Every single lane looks a lot more confident, a lot more aggressive. Let's see if it pans out for them. An aggressive lane makes it easy to gank. See, here comes a mid gank already from Artanis with the Sejuani. He's coming in. Comes in with the Arctic Assault. Uh, it does have her invisibility there. Or er, Akali does. Looks like Akali's gonna make it out of here, maybe, uh, maybe in mid lane. Yep, yeah, you get yep. some poke on the Artanis. When Akali went into her shroud, uh, you know, Jedi and Artanis both kind of used up a lot of skill shots that didn't quite land. Easy and uh, Hex Ace here trading some bindings back and forth. Alrighty, and then here is the Warwick's uh, turn to gank mid, and he's coming up. Uh, he's pinging that there's vision in the uh, bush there. He's not going to be able to get a successful gank. I don't think they actually do have vision in there. Just a sixth sense coming out from Jedi there. He does place a ward now in the river. Kids yep. forward taking the scuttle, so they've got vision on him there. There we go. And then uh, in the top lane, they're still trading. Both of them are being very, very aggressive. Uh, the Mordekaiser is not scared. The Sejuani is getting ready to move top. Nice. Miss Engineer is really setting really? it up, getting Miss all the cooldowns out. Nice, they're going to clear this ward. He had a really good trade, Miss Engineer did, on the uh, Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser is going to have to back off a little bit. Um, he is not CSing, even though he is shoving the wave up. He's not uh, getting as much CS as he should. Oh, Jedi going through another trade on this Akali here. Warwick's coming around, but walks right through that vision. Yep. So. Hopefully Jedi noticed uh, the work right there in mid. I'm sure he did. Uh, they're always looking at the mini-maps. And then in the bot lane here, uh, Shadekeeper is getting a little bit behind on CS. Uh, uh, Easy Breeze is uh, out of mana right now. So they're not going to be able to follow up a whole lot. they got to be really, really patient here. Um, hopefully they can play safe under tower, get some CS, and maybe wait for a gank. The work's floating down. I think he's trying to get some uh, counter jungling in. Or get some uh, deep deeper vision, which is exactly what they needed to do from last game. Yeah, the Ducks coming out much stronger this game, uh, and although they have priority, they are down in CS across several lanes. Yeah, CS it looked a hundred gold lead. Yeah, it looked like the Mordekaiser was really, you know, shoving into the Aatrox here into Miss Engineer, but he just wasn't CSing. So shoving the lane is great and all, but if you're not getting the CS, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, sometimes when you build up a big wave, and so what happened here is that there was a lot of, uh, you know, red minions coming in, and they were actually killing all of the blue minions uh, because Miss Engineer had a, had a small freeze going. Again, Aatrox just really doing well with these trades. I'm yeah, actually looks... surprised to see the temperance there. I thought he might have flashed a work, work is coming up. Work is only level three here. Uh, it's a little... It's a little sketchy there for the work. I think the Aatrox could actually turn around in 1v2 if they uh, misplay it. Now, both mid laners are uh, level 6. Jedi did burn his flash there. 
Looks like Akali had already backed, and so had a pretty good item advantage, which means she would have won that fight if they had gone all in. All right, here comes Artanis in the mid lane. This is exactly what we wanted uh, earlier. We wanted Shade to play under tower and then get a nice gank. They were able to get the first blood out of that. Artanis and... does burn the flash. That was a great game. Right up to the end of the room. Probably going to take out Artanis. Lands the ignite. That's all it took. Yeah, I think they could have saved Artanis if they burnt the, the Twitch's uh, heal there. Yep, I think they could have. I, th I think they could have body blocked just enough to uh, keep the Akali out. It, it would have been a little risky, but uh, I, I think yeah, you know, keeping gold off the Akali is good. All right, now we see uh, Jedi is coming back in the mid lane right here on the Yone, and he, he's got uh, tier two boots. He's ready to be really mobile, ready to dodge some of these skill shots and uh, put a lot of more pressure on this Akali. And then we also see Aatrox in the top lane, starting off with a Hex Drinker. He's getting really, really tanky for that Mordekaiser. And Mordekaiser uh, getting an Oblivion Orb, which reduces healing from the Aatrox by 40%. So they're so both trying I, to pick items to counter each other really early. If I were the Ducks, I would already be very concerned about the level gap. Um, looks like it disappeared momentarily, but the resource difference between the Sejuani and the Warwick here. Warwick is getting some counter jungling in, which will help that. But I think they're going to give up first dragon for it. Yeah, Yon's uh, under tower. The Juani is going to move in on that jungle since Warwick showed top. A truck should be okay here. He's going to pop the ulti, get some regen in. Nice. Uh Looks like Miss Engineer on the Aatrox is extremely comfortable. Was not never spelled that gank at all. He did uh, pop the ult, uh, got some sustain in, and traded well with the work. The work actually took a good bit of help. Now the Mordekaiser is actually bullying a little bit on the uh, on the Aatrox. He's got the shield going. I, does Mordekaiser still have his ult? No, he already no, burned he it. He just used it. That's what the. Yep. Oh, nice job. With the great invade into the jungle. Picks up a free kill on the Warwick. They got the dragon. They're getting kills. Back. So we knew the warp was uh, low after the uh, failed gank in top lane. So the mid laner uh, Jedi on the Yon went over there and punished the warp. We easy flashes in, looking for a kill. Oh, oh. got too greedy. He ended up taking two turret shots right there with the last turret shot and the Jinx auto coming out at the same time. It really cleaned them up. Uh, that's definitely not what you want to do. The Jinx has already got a CS lead, and that's just going to pr further propel that. Yeah, definitely do not want to see that kind of thing out of your support. You know, it's the it, kind of thing when it works, everyone's great, but when it doesn't, it's really bad. Yeah, the Akali just needed to back off. I think that was a really, really high risk, little tiny reward play there. I think she was trying That's to stay all, in. Yeah, so all of a sudden, 10 minutes, and all of a sudden, CEI's got a 2k gold lead. Uh, this is very, very bad for the Ducks here. Very good right. for CEI. They've got complete control of the map now. Lanes pushed everywhere, leads everywhere. I think it's made really hard for the Mordekaiser to close in and kill on this Aatrox with the Hex Drinker. Uh, I think he really needs a gank to be able to secure that. The work is in topside jungle. This Warwick is falling so far behind, but he did hit level 6, so his ganks will be significantly more important. Here it goes, Miss Engineer. He's got the ult. He's coming in. He's going to pop the ult, and he's going to get lots of regen here. Let's see, he's going to kill more Kaiser. Almost. The did flash, flash away. He should be able to finish up this Warwick, because the Warwick is so low, so far behind, he just doesn't have much there. Dang, he just did not have enough juice. Yep. He got them both extremely low. Uh, the flash from the Mortar Kaiser. All right, so that didn't go well. It did give the bot lane the ability to pressure. You know why that was going on? Because Warwick was showing top. Unfortunate Miss Engineer did overextend there. Took that fight. He was confident he could win it. And he just kind of got, he outplayed himself just a little bit with the switching target. Yep. The like turn you. overstayed. They're welcome, and Jedi should be able to clean this up if he can land a single skill shot. 
He didn't, <laughs> but he did get the Epnos in. There you go. Went into his own in the turret. That's Yone for you. Miss everything, still kills you. All right, so Easy is down here. Easy and Twitch are down here. This does a lot of damage. I... Yeah, they didn't execute that well. I think they should have been a little bit more patient on that dive. I tried to land some CC on Twitch. Black yeah. Shield came in, came in great. Uh, successful disengage though by the Ducks. At least they didn't give anything away to get that. Yeah, I do think if the Akali waited for the wave to push up, uh, they would have been a little bit more successful there. They did get the heal out of the Twitch. It looks like our bot lane's running double heal. Warwick uses his ult to disengage. Was going for the steal there on the Rift Herald. So there is a significant CS advantage on this Jinx in the bot lane. I think they have been zoning uh, the Twitch quite a bit. You can see he's he's down about 500 gold. He's got a massive gift from Manila, 1200 gold there, and the jungle uh, is another huge gold lead. Yeah, I like, a... oh, I like to take a look at the CS differences of every lane. Um, you know, we have a 30 CS difference in top, you know, 20 in the jungle, and another 20 <laughs> in the mid lane. Uh, Sejuani goes in with the Arctic Soul and then hits the ultimate, but Mordekaiser ulted the Sejuani to protect herself from the Aatrox. Just a defensive ult there. Now this... That's worse by himself right now. He's trying to get some uh, vision and clear up vision. Uh, getting ready for this dragon that's coming up in the next couple seconds. Alright, I think there's a couple eight. This is a close fight. This is a close fight. Oh. Akali outplays the the Yon. Yon missed a couple of those skill shots. Akali's hard to tie down. With Yon having it back, um, I think Work and Jinx right here are going to go for this dragon. This will be the first objective we've seen uh, the Ducks get, so it's a good sign. With them now the Morgana and Twitch are coming over. Nice. It looked like the Morgana Q is actually gonna steal that. It was really close. Would you say that Oblivion Orb actually doing some pretty good work against the Aatrox and the trades? So some of these matchups aren't looking as easy as they were earlier. It looks like Yon's having a little hard here. time. Yeah. Akali is trading very well versus this Yon. Sejuani is coming in mid, clearing up some wards. So what I want CEI to do here is slow this game back down. There's still not many towers down, uh, but things like look, we're getting a little scrappy over these different fights. Let's slow this down a little bit and wait for the Sejuani. Uh, um, the landers were getting a little confident, you know, but they got their early advantages with Sejuani and they need to wait on her uh, to come by for these ganks. Someone tell Miss Engineer that because Miss Engineer is about to go under the tower and take this Mordekaiser. Does not care if there's a jungler or not. No, he does not. You know, but he also has a significant um, CS advantage. He did give some of that back. With uh, you know, with the kill that Mordekaiser picked up, that was a nice play by Mordekaiser. You got the grip underneath the tower. Uh, made him take another turret shot. All right, so oh, let's, 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 let's sneak into these bushes down here. Let's see if they can get a play. Here comes Yakus and the Sejuani. Easy. There you go. Works trying to get down there. He's just way too late. He was going for the blue buff. They had no idea that Sejuani was in there. Uh, they're able to take two kills from there. There's uh, another great what... game for Terrace. I think Twitch picked up both those kills, which is What's right where you want to gold. 
What's going on in mid lane? They're looking really close right there. Okay, they're just CSing. Jedi is getting a CS advantage, but the Akali, I'm not sure that ma factors in so much. It's such a skill matchup. This Mord uh, needs to play really careful. I think this Warg needs to start playing to that Mord side a little bit. Uh, get ready for the gank for the Sejuani, or the uh, Warg can go ahead and commit to a gank on the Aatrox and they can clean that up. You know, CEI is kind of in a weird situation where there's a five, uh, 4,000, almost a 5,000 gold lead here. Um, but it's not really playing out in these lanes. A lot of that gold's on Sejuani. Here comes the Akali. Sejuani and... Sejuani is here. Locks the gold. And Sejuani is very strong. Takes out the Mordekaiser. This engineer does go down. It's a one for one trade. Yon is rotating over there. It looks like the Sejuani is going to be able to get out. Now, a one for one trade for the Mordekaiser and Aatrox. Um, you know, I, I think the Aatrox is still significantly ahead. You know, uh, Mord does have the one kill, but it takes about 17 ish CS to equal one kill. So, yeah, like and, you've got, and you've got this kind of lead. You don't need to be trading kills. Right. This engineer, once again, needs to be more patient and wait for Sejuani to get there first before engaging. Which comes out of invisibility on the Sakali, and that is a good sign too, because this Sakali is the one sign of life that the ducks are showing here. Yes. Picked up that kill on Aatrox. Uh, that is a great roam by the bot lane. This Akali is extremely aggressive and confident, and they're able to punish that. Uh, when she was going in there for a poke, the Sejuani walked up with the black shield from the Mord, and they're able to capitalize on that. Mord did miss her binding there. They're gonna walk over there to Harold. Uh, they see Warwick's on it. Oh, he's already got it. He's teeping out, or he's uh, backing out. Sorry. And then we got Yon uh, already pushing the tower in bot lane. Akali is going down there to match. Kind of executing this 1 3 1 strategy, which is a great way to abuse a lead. I think they're trying to get the, the Yone kind of, out of away from the Akali a little bit um, because he's a lot stronger with his lead in these other matchups. So if they can kind of a 3v1 on the Akali, uh, he has just he can 1v2 quite easily. And Dragon is up. So they're going to be able to capitalize on that, go get a free Dragon. You know, and this is a great job. They got vision in the bottom jungle and they invaded it. And as everyone came in to face check, they just deleted them. Two and then one. And, and this objective will be free. This is only the second dragon, so it's going to be quite some time. Another 10 minutes until the, the 30 minute mark before we see Dragon Soul come into play this game. And we see Yun uh, taking the Raptors there. They're taking every resource they can from this team. So even when they do back, this works. They're not going to be able to come out and get the jungle camps. This works going to stay behind. Um, it's really going to be hard for him to come back in this game. Where it did drop the rift behind the fight here in mid. If CEI does go down right here, it could be uh, some pretty big trouble for the push. Aatrox has come over to mid, but so is Mord. Sorry about the mic difficulties. I may have to dig into uh, Jedi's college budget, budget and get me a new mic. Nice. This Aatrox uh, landed a snare. He's going on another center. They were able to clean it up. Position the Twitch. The Yone able to gap close on the Jinx was able to to kill her as well. They have a lot of priority right here. They can get some nice vision on that top side and look for the Baron. This gold lead just keeps ballooning. 
Yeah, they're gonna reach that point where it's gonna be very difficult for CEI to come back, or yeah, for, for the Ducks to come back. Yeah, with an 8,000 gold lead, it makes it really difficult. But tougher games have uh, happened, so it's definitely not impossible. Yeah, this Akali is still picking up kills. Notice now, you know, that one of the big keys as to whether or not the Ducks can get back in this game, notice these huge bounties we have on Sejuani, on Yon, and on Twitch now. And so protecting those individuals from the Akali is a big deal. Because Akali is one of those champs that definitely can um, clear a team off the map if she gets enough resources. And just a side note, we did see the Twitch is going to AP. So uh, Twitch went crown into Nashers. So uh, trying to play very, very safe. That way when they open up, they don't take as much damage initially. Warwick has aggressively used that defensive ult. It is a little concerning seeing him just trying to struggle to keep up with the chickens at this point in the game now. Flashes down. This Artanis Jinx is, is quite alone. E this Jinx is taking strong. everything. And that's a free Baron. I think the Jinx hit the uh, Artanis there on the Sejuani like six, seven, eight times. And his health bar was not moving. She might as no, well he, have been a caster minion. 219 hard steel stacks. And Jinx on one item. I'm really excited to see how they use this Baron. Let's see if they go with the 1-3-1. One, one. Uh, I, I just don't want Miss Engineer to get picked here. All right, so they've got this Baron. Uh, they are going with the 131. Now it's important here that these guys do not overextend and get collapsed on until Yon and Aatrox can get to uh, pressure kind of like going off sides in soccer. You know, you want to you want to keep those levels even to apply equal pressure. So we do have four in the mid lane here. No one or five in the mid lane uh, for the Ducks. No one is matching either of the split pushers and, and CEI successfully backs off as they should. Yep. Let this pressure do the work. You, war, war, D, war, war went in, D. but there was no follow up. Everybody was already backing. He probably came in way too late. They needed to do that when yeah. all five of them were mid. They didn't need to wait. They really synced up and now they get collapsed on. The Akali goes down to Jedi. And they should be able to close up this game here. 42 second respawn timer on the Akali. Uh, the yeah. Warwick's coming back up, but that doesn't really matter. He's so far out of the game. Yeah, DCR just, needed to... It should be game right here. DCR needed to match those side lanes earlier, or they needed to engage harder sooner in that mid fight. Um, the work engaged right as everyone backed off, and it was just a uh, miscommunication by them. They needed to be on I'm the same say, page. I'm gonna say Warwick was tilted after these two games. They are pushing these towers. He is not going to win this. Did he take a turret shot? Yeah. I'm not sure how he died, honestly, there. That's crazy. I think Jedi took a turret shot. But out of the way, they should be able to close this one out. Ooh. All right, they did give a couple shutdowns. Weren't and quite they as coordinated as they need to be. I think if they had focused and stayed together, uh, Jedi kind of ended up by himself. I think yeah. if they had just focused, then they, they would have ended the game. They did get both Nexus turrets and they exposed top lane inhibitor. So I think they can just run over here, grab this dragon, get it clean back, and they can just walk up to the Nexus together and finish this game. Honestly, they don't even need the dragon to do it. But doing it together is the key. Yeah, so they had everything well in hand. They had the Baron. Um, they had everything that they needed there, but they got a little distracted going over, you know, 
and spread apart in their base with people respawning, and they paid the price. Yeah, see Morda and Akali trying to get as much CS as they can. They know this next fight is gonna be their last. They're trying to get as much items as they as they can. Uh, we got Jedi on the owner with the ult. Totally misses. Instantly gets ulted by the work. Um, the work gets uh, clean, cleaned up by the Twitch Morgana is strong and Aatrox. Though, that they can. They should be able to clean this up quite easily. The Morda and Akali are backing. It's a five v four here. As soon as one person goes down from the docks, this will be over. So Jordan misses his ult. Thing's still staying alive. They're trying to catch his Akali. I think it's... takes out the Twitch. The Akali does go down. The Mordekaiser goes down. The Jinx goes down. And Sina goes nice. down. And the Nexus will go down. Congratulations, yeah, CEO. So this is a, a really great win for them. Um, they got ahead and they stayed ahead in both rounds of this uh, matchup. Two very solid games. Yeah, that was a great performance from CEI. They were able to take it. So CEI is going to take uh, the match 2-0 against uh, Dallas College. So honestly, really good job from CEI this week. They had a lot of improvements from last week that I saw. So, great job on CEI. Way to sweep yeah, it out. Yeah, Miss Engineer, I think, is comeback player of, of the week. He is looking very, very strong. You know, this week in scrims and in the, in the game performance uh, compared to his previous performances. Uh, Artanis and Jedi both continue to do well. Uh, it's nice to see Ghost come out with two strong games as well. And the supports were on point. Yeah, honestly, just a great performance overall from CEI. Um, and just to kind of like close out the stream, do you guys have any uh, closing remarks for the team for the stream in general? No, thanks for coming out. Sorry about my mic or any, at least we got the stream running today. Uh, Annie and I will continue to work on trying to improve and, uh, you know, improve our casting so that we can uh, provide some more entertainment and kind of help everyone to understand what's going on. Uh, but we really appreciate you guys coming out today. Uh, thanks for being here, Andy, and thanks, Marmalade. Yeah, I think today was a really good game. It was uh, really fun to see them, uh, you know, get ahead and capitalize on their leads, and they stayed cool, and they are able to close all the games. Um, it was really fun to see all the growth and all the work that the team has put in, and hopefully next week we can continue to see the same. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. And once again, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out to the stream today, for supporting the CEI guys as they were able to take it 2-0 against uh, uh, Dallas College. And once again, thank you, Disco and Annie, for uh, carrying the commentating. You guys are doing great. And just thank you for everybody for helping us. This is kind of a big learning curve for us. There's a lot that goes behind the scenes, and the streams are uh, very technical sometimes, and there's a lot of issues. So thanks for putting up with those. But yeah, thank you for everybody coming out today. That's it from us. We won't actually see you guys again next week for League of Legends. There will be a main broadcast from the College League of Legends. So that will be happening next week. Um, and we will be streaming Rock League again on Monday. So we'll see you guys then. Thank you guys all for coming. Sounds good. Peace.